handoff to John oh. Taylor. Hughes hole. He's at the 30. He's going to go. 10, 5, touchdown. Jonathan Taylor made a man miss the line of scrimmage and then runs it into Pater. And a one-handed INT. Are you kidding me? Kenny Moore. What a play by Naheem Hines. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. Today, we're going to continue to talk about some more free agent possibilities for the Indianapolis Colts in this 2021 offseason. And today, we got a banger, folks. You're going to enjoy this one. This one's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. And this one, in my opinion, might actually be one of the best free agent signings that I'd be willing to take on if the Colts decided to spend a little bit of extra money. And the player himself is Chris Godwin, the wide receiver from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So currently, Cody, what we're looking at in Godwin, anyone that's been here through the podcast through last offseason knows that Cody, I, I don't know about Cody, but myself, I was really wanting to get Chris Godwin a lot during off the last offseason, wondering if somebody could trade for him. But, you know, what Chris Godwin, you got a receiver that is six foot one, 208 pounds. So, you know, not a small wide receiver by any stretch age of 24 years old Cody so you mm-hmm. know he's not old at all still basically on a rookie contract right now so a young wide receiver that can really do a lot of damage was drafted by Tampa Bay in the third round in 2017 for his 2020 season has played in 12 games this season has 65 receptions for 840 yards so that's 13 yards per catch and then seven touchdowns as well Ironically, Cody, 13 yards per catch this year is actually his lowest yards per catch rating since he got into the NFL. Uh, Mm. He's normally averaging about 14 and a half to 15 yards per catch. So, you know, it's a little down from that, but he also played less games this year than he has throughout the rest of his career. I mean, when you look at his career stats, has played in 58 games. So he's played in quite a few games, has 244 catches for 3,540 yards, so averaging 14 and a half yards per catch and 24 touchdowns. So this guy, for a lot of other things, you know, he has been really, really good. He runs a 4-4, so he's a possession receiver, but he's got great speed off the edge. So basically, Cody, your overall thoughts when you hear those stats from a guy like Chris Godwin. Yeah, I mean, consistently has been a pretty solid receiver for the Bucs. It's crazy that he's only 24. Like, looking at our last free agent was a young guy, too, and Sam Darnold. Now, I know that one will probably be a lot more controversial than this one. I think this one, Colts fans are are very much on board for. But, yeah, I mean, he's young. He's, you know, you already got Michael Pittman, who's, what, 6'4". So he's kind of right in between a Michael Pittman and a T.Y. Hilton if you do bring him back. Kind of a nice, just reliable receiver that you have in there. And even with all the mouths to feed, I mean, you looked at his stats, he still had over 800 yards. So uh, still a very productive receiver, no matter who his quarterback is, whether it's Jameis Winston, whether it's Tom Brady. Uh, And I like that from Chris Godwin. You know, depending who the Colts quarterback is, I think he would be a very big target. And Derek, we've talked about it. This is the one thing we said on the offense outside of, obviously, the left tackle and quarterback. We said, man, if the Colts could get a number one wide receiver, that would just change this offense completely in their receiver standpoint. They have some reliable guys, and Pittman could even be a really good receiver. He was just a rookie last year, obviously. So looking at it from that standpoint, if the Colts had a true X receiver, right, a true guy that could go out and would make defenders like uh, not really be able to sleep at night, right, that type of guy, man, if the Colts were able to get a guy like that, I mean, that would just be so big. It would be so different uh, and bring a whole different element to this offense that they were especially lacking last year. So – I mean, especially if you do, I know there's been a rumor floating around and we thought, you know, it's been a rumor, which is why we talked about this video. We kind of cranked this video out here pretty quickly here. But, um, and again, it's just a rumor, so we don't know for sure. But if you were to bring back T.Y. Hilton and put him more in the slot, then, I mean, then you have your top three receivers right there. And uh, I, I feel really good about that, honestly. I don't know how you feel about that, but if you brought all three of those guys in and had your top three receivers being, being Godwin, being Hilton, and being Michael Pittman, I mean, 
that is tops in the league, in my opinion, or one of the tops uh, trios in the league by far. Yeah, and then you also add Zach Pascal to that mix, which definitely is really cool. And, you know, let's say the Colts don't decide to go with T.Y. Hilton this next year. You know, you can afford to bring in another guy like a Chris Godwin because Godwin's numbers are going to, you know, he's going to get some money this offseason based off yeah. these numbers and being pretty reliable. You pretty much answered the next question of will they improve <laughs> the roster? I mean, oh, it's yeah. pretty much that's pretty <laughs> much it. I mean, you know, Godwin fits anywhere that you want him to, and he just really does a great job of being that reliable option. Like you said, we'll talk about his injuries here in a little bit. Sure. But um, again, just yeah, having somebody like a, a speed demon and a good possession receiver like a Godwin and then mixing him in with guys like Michael Pittman who can be that big body wide receiver. He's a possession guy but also has some good quickness. And then, you know, Zach Pascal is going to stick around for a while, we think. So, you know, th that's a good collection of wide receivers. I really think whichever quarterback is going to be the next quarterback for – Indianapolis, you know, it, they're going to have to pitch that to Godwin. It's one of the only ways that Godwin's going to come here. I think that's the big question, though, Cody, is that if somebody can actually convince Godwin to leave Tampa Bay, because, you know, I don't know Tampa Bay's cap situation currently. You know, they have some guys that they're going to need to pay. You know, Godwin, with how much money he's probably going to want to ask for, given that he's the number one, number two wide receiver in Tampa Bay, because, you know, they got to keep Mike Evans. They'll probably keep Scotty Miller. Who's to say whether or not they're going to re-sign a couple of their tight ends and, like, another receiver here and there? So there may not be a whole lot of options mm -hmm. for Tampa Bay to sign Godwin. But, I mean, that's just going to be the big question when it comes to that. So... The other question that you had, Cody, was do they fit for the Colts? So how does Godwin fit into this system with Indianapolis? I mean, I said it before, it depends on who the quarterback is, right? It all does. Yeah, it all depends who the quarterback is, but regardless who it is, like, you know, it's a draft pick. It's a trade for a quarterback. It's ruling with even uh, a Jacob Eason. I mean, whoever it is, you want to surround them with the most talent you can get. And again, it's going to depend who the quarterback is, I think, for Godwin to potentially want to leave a team like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are in the Super Bowl and, you know, are one of the best teams in the NFL. But yeah, I think ultimately he does fit into what the Colts want to do. He's young. He's, you know, he's not a guy that's a project. I mean, he's a top receiver in this league as well. Mm -hmm. um, you'd essentially, like, we talked about it with Sam Darnold a little bit, right? Like, if you signed him 23, 24, he's almost as young as some of these rookies coming out of this class. Like, he's just that type of, of guy that came into the league so early, right, that, that now that he's developed himself as one of the top receivers in the league. It's kind of like years ago uh, when the Colts had the chance to sign Allen Robinson. It was like he was so young. You should, I, in my opinion, I kind of wanted him to sign him. And this is a similar situation where he's a young, really good receiver. And the Colts really need a young, really good receiver to pair alongside Michael Pittman for the near future. And if you do that, man, you can invest your draft capital in so many other places that need to be addressed, whether that's quarterback, whether that's left tackle, whether that's pass rusher, you know, whether that's tight end, whether that's corner. There's so many options there. And it just would take that off the board, make one less thing you have to worry about and put pressure on yourself in the draft. You can get a guy in free agency. You know, if you sign a guy like him, you still have a lot of cap space, right? I mean, you you gained a whole lot of cap space from first Anthony Costanzo retiring and then not paying your two quarterbacks, but you're paying them this last year. So, you know, thinking about all that, I personally would be on board for it, absolutely, because I think he does fit with, with the Colts' future plans of getting young at wide receiver and also getting more talented at wide receiver as well. So I would say check, check for both of those. And even with Godwin missing four games this year, still is in the top 25 in uh, receptions this year when it comes to all players actually right there with his teammate, Mike Evans. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, great players here that, you know, I'd say Godwin is easily a top uh, 25 receiver when you look at how everything comes into play with the stats. So mm -hmm. then you have to talk about, I just mentioned earlier, how much does this player going to cost? Right. Yeah. We saw that Godwin's currently still on his rookie deal. So he came into the league in 2017. He's on his last year right now. Current salary is 
$2.13 million because of where he was drafted and everything else. But when you're talking about a guy who's, you know, top, pretty much top 30 and everything that he does, I mean, this guy's going to get a, a payday. I don't know how yeah. much we would be willing to go. Uh, I'm trying to like look at, you know, some of the other guys who, you know, NFL receivers that um, sure. made some extra money. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it's all up to how the Colts value him and whether or not he's worth. I look at some of these top wide receivers, you know, I look at guys like Robert Woods, you know, has a contract of $65 million getting paid 16 and a half per year. Looking at guys like Allen Robinson getting paid $14 million a year. T.Y. Hilton currently getting paid $13 million a year. Me personally, I would be, I mean, his stats are right up there with Mike Evans, who currently at this moment is getting paid $16.5 million per year and is, has a total guarantee in over $55 or $38 million in fully guaranteed money. Mm, yeah. So, I'm one of those guys that I think that he's probably going to get somewhere, you know, 15 to 15 to 20 million easily because he's young and, you know, his body of work goes to show you that he can be a guy that you can consistently rely on to make plays regardless of injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. Now, I mean, you look at some of those top receivers, some of them got paid years ago, right? So you got to think the money's going to go up a little bit as well. So I could see anywhere between that. Yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, now that you kind of pull it up, I would say probably anywhere between the numbers that you just said. Uh, probably not 20. I would not be willing to go that much, but yeah, for sure. Somewhere in between there is probably where his market's going to be. And uh, I would definitely love for that to happen. That's for sure. I, he'd be worth every penny, man. I mean, the, the big question is, is does Ballard even pull the trigger on that? Right. You, yeah. I mean, do you think he would? I mean, at this moment in time, because you think you're so close to where you want to be, right? I mean, you mm. get a guy like a Chris Godwin, a real number one wide receiver that can come right in. He improves that offense so much. I mean, yep. he's not a he's not a Julio Jones. He's not a DeAndre Hopkins. But, you know, he is right in that tier, right below those guys that you can really depend on somebody like him. I just think, you know, if Ballard's going to go all in, now's the time to do it. And, and I think you can afford to give him something like that. I do, too. Yeah, I do. I, and for the people who always say Ballard doesn't, you know, make moves or he doesn't pay people. I mean, you look at what he did last year with the Forrest Buckner. That should debunk all of those theories and all of those horrible takes honestly um because what did we see ballard thought man we're just a dominant three technique away from being a top defense in the league what did he do he not only traded 13th overall for him he made DeForest buckner one of the highest paid defenders in the national football league so i think potentially could be something on offense where you just look at uh, uh chris godwin and say man if we sign this guy we know we're not getting any younger at receiver we've had some you know outside of michael pittman maybe zach pascal we have some question marks at our wide receiver position. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, obviously, the age and some injury concerns a little bit uh, from previous years. So, yeah, you bring in a Chris Godwin. And the thing is, Derek, if you bring in a Chris Godwin, him and Michael Pittman would be two really good receivers on your team locked down for the next couple years together. Man, that would make one of the best tandems in football. So, I agree. I really think, like, if the time's to strike and you think you have the chance to push for a Super Bowl this year, the time to strike is now, and to get a guy like Chris Godwin, I would definitely do that. Yeah, I mean, it's ultimately just going to be a bidding war because, you know, mm -hmm. Indianapolis, whatever team decides to try and go after him, if Chris Godwin is open to moving, you know, because the state of their team is pretty good right now, right? The culture's there. They're doing really well. They're obviously in the Super Bowl, so it would probably take quite a bit of money to convince Chris Godwin to want to leave, but... And the ultimate thing here, the last thing we'll talk about is any concerns, Cody, that you might have with a player like Chris Godwin. Is there any that come to hmm. mind with you? I mean, I think the last two years, he hasn't played in all 16 games. In 2019, he played in 14 games last year. Obviously, only played in uh, 12 games. So that is a concern slightly for me, especially if you're giving all that money out to a guy like him. And then you got to ask the question, okay, Jameis Winston threw for a ton of yards um, last year, and Tom Brady obviously threw for a good amount of yards this year. How much of that is just the quarterbacks and what they like to do, right? I mean, because because I mean, Chris Godwin, as good as he is, you have to ask the question, okay, outside of this system, 
is he going to be as productive? Now, we he, we think he probably will be because he's put up a really good body of work, but that's kind of potentially a question for me. How does he look outside of Tampa Bay? Right. That that's mm-hmm. and we know how much Tampa Bay likes to throw the ball down the field. Heck, we saw that with Bruce Arians and Andrew Luck, right? In, in his rookie year. That's what they love to do. They love to, you know, take time and throw it down the field. So yeah, those are my two concerns. Not really majorly concerned about either of those, but if I had some, that'd probably be those concerns right there. Yeah, I look at his injury history and I can give you the full rundown on it right now. Uh it back in December of 2019 had a uh, thigh hamstring strain. It was a grade two. It kept him out for those two games that you mentioned. And then when you look at the uh, this season in total, he had a concussion in uh, September, had a, a, high, a hamstring strain again in September as well. Mm. And then he ended up fracturing a finger um, in October of this year as well. So, that's what's caused him to miss four games. But even so, like, I mean, cause the concussion wasn't anything serious. It was a grade one. He was back the next week, I think. So that wasn't much of an issue. And then the, uh, the thigh one, it kept him out for two games. And then that finger only really kept him out for a week. It kept mm. him out for a week or two. So it wasn't a big deal. He still came back. They just ma- did some minor stuff to it. So, You know, Godwin has had a few injuries, but it's not like it's been anything severe. So, right. you know, for when it comes to major concerns with a player like uh, Godwin, I really don't have any. You know, he's young, not a a drastic injury history, you know, has had a lot of great production. And like you said, with before this season, a bunch of a couple different quarterbacks that, you know, people really didn't know. You know, because we know Jameis Winston was throwing the ball all the time. So, you know, even then, I don't think it, his numbers are really inflated by anything. And, you know, this year, missing four games, but still having a very respectable season right alongside of a bunch of other weapons. I mean, I, what more can you say about Chris Godwin? Only thing is, is just whether or not he's actually going to be available. I just don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's true. This that's true. No idea. Is he going to get too expensive? That's another concern. Is he going <laughs> to get really... too expensive? And is he going to want to even leave in the first place? We don't yeah. know. So yeah, that's not even a concern with him as a player. It's just for the market. Yeah. Where yeah, the exactly. Going to go. So yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. Let us know what you all think in the comments, your opinion on a guy like Chris Godwin. Would you be willing to spend a lot of money to bring in a wide receiver like him? Or do you think Ballard should just maybe focus on something else? But for Cody and myself, thank you very much.